Hey y'all, come on in. The weather is cool. It is soup time of the year, y'all. So, guess what I'm making? I'm going to make the biggest pot of soup that I can make. The weather is cold. It's in the 30s. And believe this, for two days, I didn't have any heat. So, my bones are chilled. I'm ready to get them warmed up. So, I'm going to get over here on the stove here in a little bit. And I'm going to get a big old pot of soup going sitting down relaxing enjoying right now but it's soup time y'all it's hot tea time y'all and i'm definitely ready to kick off my big pot of christmas soup so without further delay i'm gonna finish up my hot cup of tea right here i'm gonna get over here on the stove i'm gonna make me a big old pot of soup that's gonna last at least a couple of days it'll last through the weekend you might even see it on the flavor train this weekend so listen let me say this to you. Get your pot of soup going. Get you a nice big old red bowl like I've got. Help you up a bowl. Sit down. Kick your feet up. Crumb you some crackers in it. Eat you a corn muffin with it. Or a nice grilled cheese sandwich. Whatever. But we're going to make this pot of soup. So if you hang on a minute, we're going to switch over to the soup area. So I'm going to say to Lou for a few minutes. Love y'all. Hey y'all, come on in. Good Sunday afternoon. It's time to get Sunday dinner going for the flavor train. I'll be pulling in here in a couple hours. I'm sort of cooking late today because this is not going to be a, a long time meal. Sometimes let me adjust my camera. I'm going to uh, double back on some recipes today. Um, just something quick and easy but hearty and good. And usually I cook whatever I have a taste for so, unless somebody gives me a uh, suggestion recipe. So uh suggestion menu rather so what i'm gonna do today i'm gonna double back with some uh my style of curry chicken my girl barb and mildred are supposed to come over so you know i'm brave to be doing curry chicken uh some of it i learned from her the other part of it i kind of sort of just embellished and made it my own anyway so i'm going to be doing some curry chicken and rice some stir fried cabbage rice in that pot and remember those black beans i fixed last week I got enough of them uh, to go around today, so I'm going to pull those black beans out. And we're going to do the black beans, and of course, you know, I'm going to do some of my uh, world-famous corn muffins. Um, and like I said uh, earlier, you may see some soup come up on the flavor train. just depends on how these appetites are. As a matter of fact, they may start eating the soup prior to dinner getting ready, because uh, dinner's not going to be ready until about 3.30. So it's going to take me a couple hours to get this on the table. So what I'm going to do is just start, for those of you who didn't tune in before, I have got my uh, chicken. I use I like to use the chicken thighs. And that's what I got. Chicken, well, I had the, uh, the whole drum. So I had the chicken thigh and the drumstick. I always cut them apart. I don't debone. If I buy it already, debone, wonderful. But I'm not going to trouble of deboning. Not today anyway. Anyway. I've got my chicken all seasoned up, and what I did this time, I mixed all my seasoning, and so I can just shake it one time. So I, in that seasoning, right here, I've got garlic powder, a tablespoon, everything I put a tablespoon of to make this um, mixture here. So a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of jerk seasoning, a tablespoon of complete seasoning, a now half a tablespoon of salt. And then a tablespoon of my dry chicken mix, chicken broth mix. So I mix all that together. And I'm sorry, and a tablespoon of black pepper. So mix all that together. So when I start seasoning the chicken, I just do it all at one time. Ideally, when I do my curry, and oh, the most important thing, two tablespoons of curry powder. Of course, you got to put curry powder on it. And also a teaspoon of uh, poultry seasoning. Or sage, whichever one you have. Um, so, what I'm getting ready to do now, now that I've got it all seasoned up, I rubbed it real good. Season is on there really, really good. So, what I'm going to do now is go ahead. I've heated about a fourth of a cup of oil over here in my skillet. Oh, now you know I had to turn that camera over at least one time. So, hopefully, that's my time. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, what we're going to do now, get the camera fixed back. And I'm going to go ahead and put the chicken into my heated oil over here. Give me one second and I'll get the camera skillet in frame. 
Got that oil heated up a fourth of a cup of oil. Just get it pretty good and hot. Now what I'm doing here is just searing this chicken. I'm not trying to cook it, just searing that flavor in. Uh, I think I've got 13 pieces of chicken. This is a good, good size, uh, good size uh, pieces of chicken, so uh, we got to feed, I think, probably end up feeding six pieces. Um, probably just bring some kind of meat over, so we'll have plenty of food. So basically what I'm, I'm doing with this chicken here is to get it seared up on each side. I'll do it like this for about four minutes on each side to burn it up and make it look real pretty. Once I do that, I'm going to take it out of this pan. I'm going to put it in my big uh, red cooking pan here. You'll see it better over there. And I've got all my veggies all cut up to put to saute in the pan. I'm going to saute these veggies. And then I'll put it all into the oven. Now, I don't know if y'all were on that journey with Tony and I last week or not. We went to the Asian market. And I purchased this golden curry um, sauce mix. It is the best. I always get mild because I don't like real, real hot food. So what I'm going to do with this is uh, this is what I'm going to make the broth that uh, the sort of a gravy that goes in with that curry chicken. That's going to give it even more of a curry flavor. So this is a real good brand. It's called Golden Curry Sauce Mix, and I've got the mild flavor. And most grocery stores carry it, but I, we got it from the Asian market, okay? So that's going to be my other thing that's a little bit different than when most people make curry chicken. So, I'm going to get my rice going here. I got my beans are left over, so all I got to do is heat them up. I got to stir fry this uh, colander full of cabbage. That's going to be going. So, about 2, this is about 3.30, we're going to be eating them. So the flavor train will be pulling in here in a little while. So until uh, then, I'm going to go ahead and get off camera here and start doing my other cooking. And as we progress along with this chicken, I will let you see what it's looking like. For those of you who haven't tuned in before, I hope y'all are having a great Sunday afternoon. It's cold here in North Carolina in the high 30s. But it's so beautiful. The sun is shining, but it's nice and crisp outside. So we're looking forward to a great holiday season. Hope you are. Hope you got all your shopping almost finished. I know those decorations are done now. I know we got the decorations up. We already enjoying our here. Um, I've had uh, one Christmas brunch already. I did my uh, soup. I got to upload that video to my uh, Christmas soup. I've already done that before. So this is going to be a Christmas Sunday dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and get this finished up. And uh, I'll be back shortly. So hang on. Okay, y'all, I'm back just for a sec. I got my stir-fried cabbage going. What I've got here is um, um, a medium-large uh, cabbage. I just chopped it up, sort of slivered it, pieces about that size, like that. Anyway, I'm stir-frying it. I'm putting some of that same seasoning and sprinkling that over it. I'm mixing butter with it. I've got that much going, so I'm just going to continue to add it until I feel the skillet. Uh, my chicken is doing good over there, so I'm just going to keep adding the cabbage. And then here I've got that uh, medium-large cabbage. I've got uh, two medium-sized onions, or one large mm -hmm. onion. Just cut, you know, in pieces like that. i to cut the end off of that because that didn't spiral for me. But you can either cut them in ring it spirals or whatever. And just keep adding that cabbage. And keep that heat as high as you can get it. So that, uh, you know I got a small workspace, that's why I'm reaching across the camera, so excuse me to anybody that that bothers. Um, okay, so as I continue to add the cabbage, I'll just continue to stir it. It's a lot in this pot. I mean, you know, you just have to take your time and be patient with it. This is a huge skillet, but I got a lot of cabbage going on here. So, anyway, I'm just going to continue to sprinkle some more of that seasoning on top of there. And... I'm going to put some extra of my chicken flavored uh, broth mix on there. Um, all that for flavor. Just put a little extra flavor. You know, we have to have lots of flavor. After all, we on the flavor train. Can't be not flavored. 
Okay, and I'm going to put some of my Golden Mountain um, seasoned sauce on there. There it is. Just a few hits of that. All these flavors up together. I'll tell you what. Um, we do a lot of eating over here. And of course, I want to put some extra. You know, with, with, when you're making a stir fry, it's basically you put pretty much what you want to put on there. Uh, but you put your basic seasonings on there. Some people like some soy sauce later. I've got that sweet soy sauce. It's going to be good on here. So I'll let people put that on individually. Well, you know, cabbage is very porous. So you have to be careful not to put too much seasoning. Because it'll get real salty real quick on you. But you have to put enough so that that flavor is there. Okay? And this is not butter. This is margarine. I always like that little buttery flavor in there. So... I've already put um, most of that stick, so I put a stick of margarine, or if you got butter, put a stick of butter. I'm out of butter. I got lots of margarine. I buy butter and margarine, depending on what I'm cooking. So, I'm just going to keep stirring that, keeping that heat high. We don't want let you get a little bit of juice in there, but not a lot. Don't want a lot of juice. You want to have it, um, you want it stir fried. Okay, it's after all, it's stir fried cabbage. You don't want it uh, like boiled cabbage, you want it stir fried. Okay, get that out of there. There's a piece of onion. Okay, and as you can hear, it's frying right along. So, is my chicken over there. So, my chicken, I've got it going, it's nice and it's browned and nice. And what I'm going to do here when I get, I've got my pan already over there for it to be placed in. Let's put the pieces there. The juggling veggies here. Let me get some more. Okay. That first pan of chicken is about ready to come out, so I'm going to get it out and get it in my red pan. And it's our stir fried cabbage. This is so good. Uh, it gets all fried up and get those seasons going through it and then that stir fried flavor. The best, the best, the best. And it goes well with uh, dishes like what I'm fixing today. Um, I was going to do some, some barbecue ribs, uh, uh, beef ribs, and I thought, yeah, I wasn't feeling ribby today. I wasn't feeling like anything barbecue. So we're just doing one meat. I normally do two meats. Uh, especially if I'm having a lot of company, but they get one meat today. Because I got, for the other thing, I've got those black beans and they are loaded down with smoked turkey. So I'm thinking, you know, just leave it be. Leave it be, leave it be. Okay. Now, mm, I love raw cabbage. Woo! Woo! So, okay, got the cabbage going, so we'll be right back. Okay, y'all, that stir-fried cabbage is done. It takes a good 10 minutes to get it stir-fried. You don't want to fry it real, 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 real soft, um, because you're going to heat it, probably have to heat it back up later, but still you want it um, stir-fried enough so that all the veggies are tender, and that flavor is going through there real good. Um, and what you hear still frying, I'm sauteing the onions and uh Peppers and everything up for the uh, chicken. You see that? Those cabbage are ready to serve up. So what I'll do with these, just, they're done now. I can set that off to the side. And I've kind of capped them off a little bit. I put a few flecks of uh, red pepper on them. And wow, they just kicked up another lot. And that's a nice can of... Um, Peppers and onions, getting those ready for the curry chicken. So, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I'm getting ready to make the gravy for all that uh, curry chicken. I got my um, <coughs> have my um, onions and peppers all sauteed. And what I did with the uh, um, that curry sauce mix, I went ahead and what you have to do is put it in water and let it melt down. Remember the golden curry? Melt it down. And I just use half the box. 
which is like four cubes, and then I put half of another, so you know I have to have a little extra. So, I, to those sauteed onions, I'm going to add, I put three cups of water, and I'm just going to pour that. That's what that gravy looks like. <coughs> And the reason I'm doing it like this before I put it on my chicken, I want to make sure it's good and thick enough. I want to make sure that gravy cooks up. And I'm pretty sure it will because it looks pretty thick right now. So, we're going to get these. Uh, I always like to boil it up, cook several. You know, there I go again with that flavor thing. Like it, flavor goes real good. Real good. Okay, so we're going <coughs> to turn it up there for a minute and get it boiling so we we'll know what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, I want it too thick, not too thin. I'm going to preheat my oven to 375 and I'm going to cook it for about a good hour. By the time the flavor train pulls in at 330, it's like about 210 right now. And I have it in the oven in the next 10 minutes. So, see how that's starting to cook up there? It's like a curry gravy, is what it is. Now, <laughs> I'm going to put a few raisins in the curry. This is just one of those things you can put in. Just a very few. Not everybody likes raisins. So if anybody has to pick raisins out, it, gives it, it just gives it a little oomph of flavor. So if anybody does not like raisins, they will have but a very, very few to pull out. You know, cooking stuff thoroughly and getting the flavors cooked in makes all the difference in the world. So I want that flavor cooked in to those peppers and onions. Um, you can also add some uh, tomatoes to this. I'm not going to put tomatoes in mine. I'm not a fan of tomatoes, but that's one of the things. Carrots. Mm, that gravy is good. I think it's ready now to go ahead and pour the pour this right on top of uh, my chicken. I got my chicken over here standing by. So I'm going to move this out of frame. There's my chicken. Looks good, doesn't it? So, what I'm going to do here is just start pouring that gravy. Pour that chicken. You did not give up that money for him. You gave it up for me. Okay. The whole task was taken. Everyone did. Except Jordan. I sacrificed more than anything. Okay. I am going to get this into the oven. walked to the studio based on the book's popularity, but also because of this critical thing. Cooking for about an hour, so that's what that curry chicken with the good old curry gravy on top of there. I hate to leave one drop of gravy in a pan when I make gravy like that. The stuff is going to pour. So I want to make sure it's all on the top real good. <clears throat> I'm going to steal this here for a minute. Ooh, can't do that. 
don't know why I thought I had one of those lids already that I could use. So what I'm going to have to do for this is put some foil over Let's see here. Yep, I'm going to have to put foil because I want this to cook. Cover it because that chicken, remember we got a nice large size piece of chicken. And I want to make sure that chicken cooks all the way through to the bone and it's nice and tender. And also there's a flavor piece here. I'm just going to put in a nice piece of foil, cover it, <coughs> and I'm getting ready to run this into the to 375 degree oven for an hour. An hour and 15 minutes, so it should be good. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I'm going to be late, but I'll see you in the Cover it nice and this pan is sort of awful to cover. I'm not sure I had a glass lid, but I guess I did not. So, okay. It is in the oven. Pull my cabbage back. I'm going to go ahead and cover my cabbage. Got my rice on the back burner. Everything else is just about done. I'm going to go ahead and fluff my rice. I've just had it cooking here. <coughs> a lot of people say they have a problem cooking rice. Again, twice as much water. I'm sorry, twice as much. Yeah, right. Twice as much water as rice. Put it in there, boil it up, cover it for about 20 minutes, and voila, you got rice. Do you guys mind starting the analysis? It might take me a little I got lots of rice. Cover it back up. And let it sit there for another 10 15 minutes. It'll be done. Cabbage is all done. <clears throat> of course, I told you I'm going to do some um, black beans. Go. Uh, got my black beans okay. already sitting Bye -bye. over here to the side. They're just what I thought I'd we'll get them in the pan. And we're going to roll the flavor train in here shortly in about an hour. And we'll let you see the end results. I got to go do the corn muffin, so I'll see you in a little while. Y'all know it's the flavor train. All aboard the flavor train. This food getting double shot today, y'all. Flavor train. You got the cabbage. You got the rice. You got Popeye's chicken. You got the corn muffins. Had to get me some Popeye's mashed potatoes and gravy. Black, Black beans. And chicken curry. So when she said that, I had to get over here in a hurry. <laughs> okay, y'all heard it. You know what time it is. The flavor train has just pulled in. So it's getting ready to go down. I got everything already cooked and ready to go. Got a couple of people coming over to partake. Of course, the fried stir fried cabbage. We went through the tutorial on how to cook those. That's my fluffy steamed rice. And Tanya surprised me with some good old golden Popeyes fried chicken. So we get ready to eat. And we got some corn muffins. That curry chicken my way. Cream potatoes. And my black beans loaded with that smoked turkey. So we get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hope you're having a great dinner today. Uh, remember, keep the prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Happy holidays. Love y'all. Tulu. Okay, y'all. Served up on the plate. I'm ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy my meal. Barbara and the other uh, girls are going to come later. But I got to go ahead and eat uh, ahead of them because I'm hungry. Tanya already had to do her um, flavor train thing because she got called back to work. So we started eating in shifts. This is the second shift. I'm getting ready to eat my dinner right now. And I will entertain my guests when they get here. I'm hungry and I'm ready to do it because I've been in this kitchen for about two or three hours. So I'm going to say toodaloo until the next time.